passion. What makes you come alive? Find your passion. We always hear this word being said. It's very commonly used. But how many of us truly live it? Doing what you love for a living. Passion to profession. Now that's the dream, isn't it? Just imagine, imagine for a second with me. How many of you here love traveling? Just give me a wave, give me a wave. You love to travel. Imagine getting paid to travel. How about uh, any, anyone here love to take photos, taking pictures? Give me a wave. Imagine people paying you to take photos. Let me take it a step further, okay? How many of you here, are, you love playing games? I don't care, Velo, League of Legends, Maples. Give me a wave, give me a wave. Any gamers over here? Imagine getting paid to play games. Passion to profession. But let's be real, guys. It's not easy. I know you're probably thinking, oh, it's, it's exciting. But it can also sound a bit far-fetched. It can also sound a bit crazy. But my friends... I stand in front of you here today with some good news. It's not impossible. But before we dive deeper into that, allow me to share a bit of my background and my journey. So in 2018, I graduated with a master's degree in mechanical engineering from none other than University of Nottingham, Malaysia. Uh, in case some of you are asking, Chris, why did you choose engineering? The answer is very simple. Because my father and mother asked me to do engineering. They say very good. Uh, so that's how I started engineering. Then upon graduation, I managed to get a job as a design engineer with Sony. Now this would be, you know, some would call this the dream job. Big name in the industry. Sony. I had good bosses, good colleagues, bonus twice a year. And you know, during my first year of working itself, my boss sent me all around the world for business trips. I got a chance to go to Shanghai. I got to go to Seoul, South Korea, and even go to United States. All expenses paid. Wow, the dream job. Very stable, very comfortable. But deep down, I felt something was missing. You know what I mean? Like eating nasi lemak without the sambal. Or like in size context, it's like eating laksa, but not from Penang one. <sighs> no kick. How can? I knew I wanted to create, to speak, and to connect with people in a way that my engineering job couldn't fulfill. So, in 2021, I took the leap. Meet MCO, I quit my job, quit my stable engineering career to pursue my passions. And after three months of unemployment, I managed to get a gig with NTV7 as a TV host. And that lasted for about two years. Now, that gap between engineering and TV hosts, that's a whole different TED talk, okay, we won't go into that. But fast forward till today, I am now a full-time event MC, content creator, and basically I and ask people how much you pay for rent for a living. <laughs> now, it's, been a, it's been a wild ride, guys, but I'm nowhere near where I want to be. There's still a long way to go. And, you know, Sai shared this... this life cycle earlier, I feel I'm still in that grinding phase actually. But today, this afternoon, I would love to share with you some life lessons that helped me turn my profession, my passion, sorry, to profession and help me rise again each time life knocked me down and I hope this would help some of you as well. So, everyone ready? Give me a wave, give me a wave. All right, lesson number one, dare to dream. Everyone say, dream big. That's right. Question, when was the last time that you had a dream that truly scared you? Ask yourself. Now, I'm not talking about a nightmare. I'm talking about a vision for your future. So big, so bold, that you thought to yourself, cannot be. That's impossible. Dream big. How big? Well, someone once told me, if your dream doesn't scare you, it's not big enough. And that stuck with me till today. Because as an engineer with Sony, I was in a very stable and comfortable position. I was set for life. I could work there for another 20 years. Very, very settled, very comfortable, no problem. But that's the key word, comfortable. I kept asking myself, is this it? 
I couldn't shake the feeling that I was meant for something different, something more aligned with my strengths, with my passion for creating and connecting with people. But you see, just thinking of leaving such a stable career, Sony is a big company, MNC, was truly terrifying. Especially when you're surrounded by voices telling you to play it safe. And trust me, there will be voices. You cannot avoid this. Oh, engineering, don't waste your degree. MC, that's a part-time thing. It's not a stable job. Content creator is a job. Ah. Post video only, what? And sometimes, the loudest voices can come from the people closest to you. And some of these voices were from my parents. But looking back, I understand where they're coming from. My parents loved me and wanted what was best for me. However, my friends, their best was stability. Not just chasing after a, what they would call a pipe dream. But no matter what voices you hear around you, that's the thing about dreams. They are yours. Not your parents, not your lecturers, not your older brother or sister. They are yours. And if you're going to, if you're going to rise again, each time life knocks you down, you have to be brave enough to pursue and hold on to what truly makes you come alive, even if it scares the people around you, even if it scares yourself. So everyone say, dream big. Lesson number two, try first, think later. Now wait, don't get me wrong. Huh? I'm not asking you to drop out of uni tomorrow or suddenly quit your job. Please, please, please. I don't want to suddenly get parents calling me after this and say, oh, Chris, oh, my son suddenly want to drop out of uni, want to be a full-time influencer, want to start your own business. What I'm trying to say here is, why not do both? It works both ways. You can actually still build your dream life you can still build your passion on the side while you study a degree that you may not fully understand or even work a 9 to 5. You are more than capable of that. Try first, think later. What I'm also trying to say is don't overthink it. We're all guilty of this, guys. Paralysis by analysis. <laughs> we overthink. We worry. We plan every possible outcome that we don't even take the first step. Just the first step. Now, um, I, 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 you know, if you, if you forget everything I said today, just remember this. Okay, I want to share with you a little secret. Get ready. Yeah? There will never be a right time and you will never be ready. It's a myth. It truly is. Oh, oh I, 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 I want to change job. I want to find a better job. But you know what? Let me wait for my bonus in the next three months. Then only I start looking. Oh, I want to be a YouTuber. I love creating videos. But you know what? Let me just save up some money until I buy the latest Sony camera. Then my video's quality very nice. One. Then I'll start. We overthink things. So, you are, remember this life hack, okay? You will never be ready. And there will never be a right time. For me, my starting point was actually back here in University of Nottingham when I started emceeing events, volunteering for events, uh, for clubs and societies, and also creating content on YouTube. Uh, I used to want to be a fitness YouTuber, so I'll be vlogging around campus. Hey guys, so today, you know, this is my diet today, you know, and then I go to the gym, I start put a tripod there, I start working out and stuff like that. So that's where it all started. But see, back then, I had no idea that all this was a job. I just did it because I enjoyed the process of doing it. I enjoyed speaking on stage, entertaining people, you know, creating videos. Little did I know that one day, I would be able to make a living out of this. So that was my starting point. Now, fast forward till today. There's a fun fact. From emceeing events in uni, to emceeing part-time while I was working as an engineer, to eventually taking the leap to pursue my passion in speaking and creating. And today, what I used to earn in one month as an engineer, I can make in one day as an event MC. So, whoever is interested in being an MC, I also start volunteering for your events, okay? <laughs> but, but jokes aside, how did we get here? 
How did we get to this point? It was through all these events back in uni. It was through creating, uploading videos that would probably get about what, 50 views, 100 views, even after editing for eight hours. All this led me closer to turning my passion to profession. And that leads me to my next point and question. Everyone ask yourself, what's the rush? Yeah, what's the rush? Exactly. We live in a world obsessed with instant gratification. It's very, very easy to want everything now. Everything so now. I need it now. You know, the other day I was emceeing this event and uh, this girl walks up to me. She said, hi, Chris. You know, I, I enjoy watching your videos. And I, you know, I, 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 she was saying that she wanted to be a content creator as well. And so we shared, you know, I shared with her some of my experiences, my background a bit, and she was asking for some tips. And she asked me this one question that I will never forget till today. Chris, how can, any tips for me uh, to expedite the process of being a content creator, of going viral, you know, getting more views? And then my uncle more turned on a bit, la. I was like, how old are you? 19, she said. I'm like, and I just told her this, I said, what's the rush? Why do you need to rush the process? You see, my friends, there are no shortcuts to success. Zero. I read this somewhere. You can take a shortcut, but the success you discover may probably be cut short. You see, turning your passion into profession is a process. It's a long oftentimes slow and challenging process. But the good news is this, it's in this process that you develop the skills, you develop the character, you develop the resilience to sustain your passion as a profession. So what's the rush? You know, when I look back at my first video, whew, I cringe, man. It, uh, and please don't bother searching this up. I already archive everything in this. So this one is an exclusive screen grab for y'all. It wasn't easy uh, creating videos like this every week, uploading it, spending a lot of time editing, but you know, no views, no reward from it. But it was through these videos that I developed the skill of editing videos. Editing. And I'm still able to use it today. So you see, through all these little steps, these little mistakes, these little lessons in life, I look back now, they were actually building blocks. Building blocks that allowed me to continue to grow, to learn, to improve. So what's the rush? You see, all the 2014 to 2024, all the uh, chicha noise videos and sudo on the street series didn't happen overnight. Okay, it took, it took years of trial, error, time, and effort. But you see, it's in that process we were able to hopefully create something that resonated with people. And we're still learning, we're still growing. So my friends, these are some of the life lessons that helped me turn my passion into profession. Everyone say, dream big. Dream big. Everyone say, try, try, try. try, try, try. And everyone say, trust the process. You see, if you're willing to stick to this, if you're willing to stick to the process, because passion to profession isn't easy. It requires courage, it requires action, and it requires a lot of patience. But is it worth it? Exactly. Well, I wouldn't be standing in front of you here if it wasn't. And if you're willing to rise again each time life knocks you down, and keep moving forward with these three lessons in mind, someday, you will find yourself not just pursuing your passion, but living it. So my friends, I ask you this. One day or day one, you decide. Thank you very much.